Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd of the Street, and today we're talking about how to get Netflix working on Linux. So if you are a Netflix subscriber and you use Linux, you've probably noticed it doesn't work, uh, at least not right out of the box. Now, a little while ago, there was a workaround for this on Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions. Basically, there was a script you could run, and that script would automatically download and install Wine, Firefox, and Silverlight, and configure it all to work with Netflix. However, like I said, that script only worked for Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions. Debian-based distributions didn't even work. So yeah, even though that was nice, if you use Ubuntu, if you use another distribution, such as, you know, Linux Mint Debian Edition, um, anything based off of Debian, or, you know, Fedora, OpenSUSE, any of those that would not have worked with. However, there is a new workaround out to get Netflix working on Linux, and this new workaround works on any distribution. Uh, so I am running OpenSUSE now, and I'm liking it a whole lot. It is rock solid, super stable, and yeah, I'd like to watch the Netflix on it. So I'm going to show you right now how to set up Netflix on your Linux distribution without using Wine or any emulators like that. All right, here we are. Now to accomplish this, we're going to use a plugin called Pipelight. And what Pipelight allows you to do is run Windows plugins in Linux browsers, just like the website right there says. So this website right here will be in the description of this video, and it shows you how to install Pipelight on any distribution, Ubuntu, Arch, Debian, Fedora, AV Linux, Slackware, SteamOS. It's even got like SteamOS and AV Linux, some smaller ones. Um, but of course, I'm using OpenSUSE, so I will select that. And like I said, once again, this might vary from distro to distro, but just go to the website in the description below, and it will show you. So I'm using OpenSUSE 13.1. So I'm going to copy this command. So secure, I know. Open up a terminal and paste it. Um, right, with root user. So let me go back to the beginning of that. Sorry, sorry everyone. All right, so I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to enter super user mode. So I'm logged in as root. Then I'm going to paste the command. And now we'll go ahead and press enter. What that did was that just added the pipelight repository to our system. So if we were to open up um, like Apper, we can do that. Then we can just search pipelight and the package should show up in Apper. All right, Apper's a little slow just all the time. So, you know. Okay, Apper really sucks. All right, so anyway, if you were to open up your package manager and it wasn't super slow like that, then you should be able to get the package through there. But we're just going to copy all of these commands. Zipper refresh. Uh, right. Yes. That would be Apper, once again. Really not a good, oh, wow. Look, Apper really, they need to, really need to fix that. All right. No, wow. Screw this. Okay, so since I just opened Apper, that was locking my package manager, so I'm just going to restart the terminal and do it again. You should not have to do this. There we go. All right, so... It is asking us, would you like to reject the key, trust temporarily, or always trust? We will click always trust, or, you know, type always trust, because we, you know, we want to be able to receive updates and things. So we will do that. So now it's refreshing all of our repositories. I guess Apper would not have shown the package, but it was asking about that key. It said untrusted key, that would be the key. Uh, and we just told it to trust that key. So now if you were to open up Apper, then Pipelight would be in that, but we're you know not going to do that because the zipper is working just fine for us. So next we will install Pipelight, and now we'll download it. Yes, so you can see there are about 43 megabytes, and it's going to use up about 300 megabytes total, so not bad at all. Linux programs usually are not um, space wasters. So this is installing Wine, um, so that's interesting. I'm not sure if if Pipelight uses Wine in some way or what. All right, so that's finished. And the next thing we're going to do is, apparently, we are going to check for updates. Pipelight-plugin-update is the command for that. All right, everything is updated. Maybe that was something else that's not just checking for updates. I'm not really sure. 
But that is how you install Pipelight, at least on OpenSUSE. Once again, the website for installation on any distribution will be in the description of this video. Next, we need to enable the plugins we want. And we want Silverlight, so we will follow all the links here. And all we really need to do is let's go ahead and exit our root prompt because this next command has sudo put in it. And we will copy that and paste it here. Um, and that should enable Silverlight. And we need to accept some licenses, and Silverlight is now enabled. So if we were to go to Netflix right now, let me go to, yeah, Netflix. And let me sign in real quick. All right, here we go. Um, this is interesting. Netflix seems to have sort of a new logo. That's really weird. Um, but yeah, as you can see, if I were to load up, let's say, Stargate, because why not? Unfortunately, Netflix has taken down the Stargate TV shows from their, their repository, but the movie is still here, like you just saw. But if I click on it, something's wrong. Um, if I click on it, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's still not working. So what's the problem now? We've installed the Silverlight plugin. Um, we've got all the requirements that we need to use Netflix. Why is Netflix not loading up our video? Well, Netflix right now is detecting that we are on Linux. Uh, because when your browser requests a web page, it sends with it uh, what kind of browser it is, just in case you need a certain language or you need a certain, you know, if you're on a mobile device or something. Um, a lot of web servers need to be able to tell what kind of device you're on. So, of course, our browser is on Linux. Luckily, you are allowed to lie about what browser you're on. So, we are going to open up the add-ons page. And if you're thinking I should have done this in advance, I'm doing it as I'm telling it to you because I want you to see exactly how to do it. We are going to search for the add-on user agent switcher, if I can spell. All right, so user agent switcher, and we will check that out. All right, so here's what happened at this point. Apparently, the user agent switcher plugin is actually broken for this purpose. It does work, but when using it with Netflix, I got several different error messages depending on the web browser that I was trying to emulate. So I went through all of this. I restarted my computer, restarted Firefox, and then I ended up using another plugin, which you'll see in just a moment. And then let's install user agent overrider. Apparently this one works. Alright, so now let's restart Firefox. Alright, so now we've restarted Firefox again and we are going to go, so now we have this user agent overrider button in our top right. This should be much easier, so let's just go to Windows, Firefox 29, and then let's refresh Netflix. Type in Stargate for the billionth time. Activate Silverlight, allow and remember. Oh my god, all right. Looks like it's working. Yes, yes. All right, everyone. So here we have Stargate. And of course, I'll pause this. Um, wow, all right. If I just like skip a little bit forward. I just want to see if it's smooth because when I was using the old workaround, it was not smooth. He's a plateau, 1928. I've, I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> of course you haven't. No one has. Now there's there's two lines of hieroglyphs. Now the inner track has the classic figures. All right, that is really smooth. And if we enable HD, will it go? I guess Stargate's a pretty old movie. It might not even have HD. But yeah, um, that is really smooth playback. Um, and that, the reason we're getting that smooth playback is because we're not running the whole browser in Wine. We're just running Silverlight in Wine. So yeah, that is how you um, how you enable Netflix for Linux. Once again, sorry about that whole confusion 
with the add-on. The user agent switcher add-on did not work, but the user agent overrider add-on does work and does get us working Netflix. So yeah, everyone, I hope that that was helpful to you. This will certainly, certainly be helpful to me because I was getting tired of having to watch Netflix on my Mac all the time because um, this is my main computer. I use Linux as my day-to-day -day operating system. So yeah, once again, hope that was helpful to all of you. Let me know if it was helpful or if you have any questions or problems at the Nerd on the Street forums at nerdonthestreet.com. But until next time, I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm Nerd on the Street, and I will see you guys later. See ya.